We're using utter flour, which is a whole wheat flour. And it's just a really fat, fine ground, stone ground one. And you can use spelt flour, you can use if you know if you're not into wheat or you can't or you're having trouble tolerating wheat. For those of you who have any difficulties, just have a go with spelt. Um, you can use other grains as well. You can use uh, barley flour, you can use uh, millet flour, you can use even moong flour, although moong flour I've got to say is a little bit dry and can make things that are a bit more like biscuits than breads. But we're going to use wheat flour today. So basically you can have a couple of cups in a bowl, just make a little well in the middle and it's simply flour and water. And you don't have to add it all at once, add it little bit by little bit and just bring them together. You're better off adding just a little bit less than what you think is necessary because once you've uh, made it too moist it's a little bit difficult to bring it back from there. You have to add a lot of flour. And you don't have to get your whole hand messy. You will get messy doing it, but you don't have to get your whole hand messy. You can just sort of use your fingertips to start with and bring it together. You'll find that it doesn't take a huge amount of water to start taking up some of that, most of that flour. And you'll go through a few different textures, but basically you want to reach the point where there's enough moisture to bring the flour together without it being too stiff or too dry. Now you can see here, it still looks quite dry, doesn't it? It's still pretty dry, but you don't want to add, you might add a little bit more than this, but you don't want to add too much more because as you work it, you can see that that's really quickly taking most of the flour off the rest, off the bowl. Mm -hmm. Here we are. So you can mop it up so there's very little flour left in the bowl. If you've got stuff on your fingers like this, you can just add it to the rest. My hands are nicely washed, by the way, everybody. <laughs> and you can do this really easily. If you're, um, when it comes to breads, if you're only using a small amount, because um, you're only cooking chapatis for a couple of people, it's really, really quick. It takes very little time. Um, and if you go to the trouble of putting your soup on, um, or your sabji on, or whatever it is that you're having, if you're just having a dal, then you can get that cooking on the stove, as we have, and, and in the meantime cook your breads, and by the time you've finished your breads, it's perfect timing, the sabji or the soup's ready, good to go. And you can see how it's all come together into it. Obviously I can work it a little bit more and the more you work it the more nice and smooth and elastic -y and um, soft it'll become. But it's already reached a consistency where it's soft, yeah, it's nice and soft, but my hands don't stick to it and they don't take up gobs of dough, you know, it's not too sticky, so sticky that it sticks to my hands. That's the kind of consistency that you want. So it's soft, it's pliable, it's, it's easy to leave handprints in it when you grab it. Yeah. You can, but it shouldn't be too tacky, like it shouldn't come away from the dough and stick to your hands at all. And you can just work that a little bit more. And as I say, if it's a little bit dry, you'll know because it's too stiff and you'll have trouble. It'll be hard, hard work kneading it. But if it's the right consistency, it should be quite soft, quite malleable, no problem to work it. And um, yeah, just try sticking to your hands. So Kess is now going to show you how to roll a chapati and we'll get a pan going. More or less, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, just going to make balls. I like doing mine walnutty, golf ball-y sort of size. Stephen does his a bit smaller. <laughs> and you're saying, Kess, that your balls are bigger than mine. <laughs> Now, um, if you need to, yeah, because this is quite a, a soft dough, so we don't want to want dough to stick. So you can just put a tiny bit of flour down. Doesn't have to be much. 
And if, like me, you can't do it the traditional way, this is a traditional rolling pin, yeah? So it's long and skinny and tapered at either end. And you're supposed to be able to roll it so that the chapati turns itself and it just turns into a nice perfect disc. <laughs> I'm here to show you the other way for people who can't do that. <laughs> so, just get your ball and then just push it down flat. Yeah? Give it, don't press too hard. Just give it a gentle roll one way so you get a nice little elongated shape. And flip it the other way. And then roll it the other way. And so you can see it's still got a circular shape. Turn it a quarter turn upside down, do the same the other side. Quarter turn upside down, do the other side. And just make it a nice gradual rolling towards a shape that's vaguely round. Hopefully not too rectangular or weird or shaped like Tasmania. <laughs> which they sometimes happen, that happens often actually. Mine are often shaped like dinosaurs. <laughs> so you get all kinds of interesting shapes. But basically you want to just keep rolling. If you press too hard on the first few rounds, then you'll end up with something that's too elongated and irretrievable. Whereas if you just go gently, bit by bit, you'll end up with something that's vaguely round, if not a bit of a trapezoid sort of thing going on. Yeah, so it's roundish. Uh, and you can see that it's quite thin, but not so thin that it's gonna poke, that we're not poking holes through it, yeah? If you roll it too thin, you'll, order, you'll straight away see that there's these little thin spots. And the problem with those is that they cook through too quickly and burn, and there's nothing left inside the cup on so if you can see here, it's already starting to get little bubbles around the outside here. These little ones forming and the edges are starting to lift. So that's early enough, you can lift it and turn it over and you can see there's a couple of little brown spots on that side. And within a few seconds you can see other bubbles starting to form as well. Now you don't want to take it too much past this point. There's no need. So you can easily just flip it over again and then we can put it straight on the flame. Straight on an open flame, and it should puff up. Okay, it's a bit anticlimactic, but <laughs> you can sort of see what's going on. And what you want to do is keep it turning, so that all the little bits that can puff up do puff up. And you shouldn't have too many burnt bits, you can have a few little brown spots, but there shouldn't be any uh, undercoloured parts. It should all go a nice, even colour. Oh. And again, flip it. Oh. Oh. Onto the foot, onto there, oh, okay. and the gear on it. Somebody put the gear Good job, well done. Whoa, we had a puff up. Oh, here goes another one. Oh, thank you, Puffing chapatis. Hey.